What's going on, world? In this blog, I would like to talk about the poise of unity. In life, no matter what we're doing, no matter what we come across, who we work with, who we're related to, um, different walks of life, we have to learn how to be unified. What caused me to come up with this topic today is me and my wife went to church this morning, went to the Mount Peninsula campus under the leadership of Pastor Alvin George's and his wife, Leading Lady George. And they're dealing with a series on partnership. And they were saying the different walks of life of people that we will come across, whether it's our spouses, our family members, mm. our co-workers, we have to learn how to have unity and partnership. So with that being said, people that we come across with are not going to always see eye to eye. We're not going to always see eye to eye with each other on different things. We're going to have different viewpoints. We're going to have different beliefs. But that does not mean we cannot be unified. Is it easier said than done? Yes, it is. Because when you have different people with different personalities, it can tend to make a challenge at times to become unified because everybody doesn't function the same way. They don't move the same way. They don't make decisions the same way. But that does not mean you have to be discouraged as far as unity. I just want to encourage some leader out there, somebody that's over a function or organization or something, you are pulling your hair out right now because unity seems like it's not happening amongst what you have going on. It can be done. I know that for a fact. The Bible teaches so much about unity. It teaches the importance of love and how we should treat others, how we should forgive, how we should pray for others. Those are all examples of unity. Now, you heard the stories before about Jesus and the disciples. They were an interesting bunch. All of them didn't see eye to eye. All of them did things different. But overall, Jesus taught them unity. Take it to the sports route. You have great teams. People think because the teams are great, they don't go through anything. That's not true. Adversity would do one or two things. It will either pull you together or tear you apart. And the great teams you'll find, adversity had to take place. Why? Because Adversity has a way of testing you to show if you have unity, part of your team, part of your camp. So long story short, no matter what's going on in your life right now, we can't do this alone. We got to learn how to love more. We got to learn how to encourage more. We got to learn how to be there for others more that really need the help. We can't allow dysfunction or disagreements or confusion or different things cause us not to want to be unified. Again, remember, it's always important to agree to disagree. You, It's okay to not like the same thing as somebody else or want to do the same thing as somebody else. But that does not mean you can't be unified. That does not mean you can't work together. Now, that does not mean you can work with anybody. I'm not saying that. But God does put people in our life that's meant to be there. That's really meant to push us to the next level. And we're meant to push them to the next level. So I said all that to say to you guys is unity is so key. Let's try unity, y'all. Let's not take advantage of social media and different outlets and use it to tear each other down. Because you don't agree with somebody said or you don't like what they do or you just sitting back just being a hater. Let's just call it what it is. It's important that we practice unity. Let's be the first person to take a stand and say, OK, you know what? Everybody else being negative. I'm going to be positive. So no matter what we're doing, we have to learn unity. We have to practice and we can't just keep going around demanding, it, especially even in politics. I'm not agreeing with Donald Trump. I'm not saying that by any means. I thank God for the two terms Obama was in office. By any means, I said I'm not agreeing with him again, but. We have to make a change. We have to be different instead of complaining and fussing and saying, I don't like this, I don't like that. Okay, are we being the solution or are we being a problem? So if we take a stand and be unity, unified, man, and just practice unity. Things will begin to change. I, I really believe for some reason God allowed this dude to be in office uh, to remind us why we have to pull together. Sometimes he has allowed weird things to happen things out of the ordinary to get our attention for what unity and i use in the last example to give you what i'm talking about in marvel's avengers 
there was, and this is the first Avengers movie, there was a part where Thor's brother Loki was the enemy. He's the enemy against the Avengers. Nick Fury brought all the Avengers together to team up as an alliance against um, Loki and his, his uh, camp. Long story short, Loki studied each one of the Avengers. He studied their weaknesses. He studied how they moved, why they, why he was in prison. It was part of his whole plan. And then when the time was right, he set it up perfectly. One by one, they fell apart and they got divided, which led to them getting isolated to realize they needed each other while Nick Fury got them together. So long story short, they got back together. They was able to fight Loki and they was able to defeat Loki and destroy him. So always remember, unity is so key. We need unity in our lives. We need it in our marriages. We need it in our homes. We need it on our jobs. Let's learn how to be unified more. New blog will be up tomorrow. Take care. God bless.